Hi guys, Scott here from Outlaw Garage. Today we're having our first trip to Geelong and we're catching up with Rick and his little creature. So I'm not quite sure how to start with this one, uh, but we're with a modified custom beetle of... Where, where do you start? How about you start? So, uh, That's probably where, four where, beetles. Uh, yeah, this is, this is, we're not starting very yeah. well here. Where, where did you get this from and how did you come up with the idea? Um, how much were you drinking while you did this? The idea's probably been in my head for 25 years or so. And I got a friend that's a boxing mechanic. And I said to him, if you ever get a body that needs, that I can cut the roof off without upsetting everybody, that, and he rang me up and said, I've got one here and you have it for 50 bucks, get it off my front lawn. So yeah, that's how it started. That's how it started. And then I rounded up another beetle for $50 up in Ballarat. So this is the product of the two of them. Which looks like it's an old um, uh, little creatures. Yeah. So I think there's some of the little creatures signage there. And then on the front is completely yeah, <laughs> recognizable. And then around the side here as well. So this was an ornament at some point when they were opening Little Creatures yeah, here little in Yeah, Little Creatures Geelong. in Geelong. Yeah, okay. Probably two or three years ago now. So where do, where do we start? I Start at the front. So at the moment it's not got a pan on it, but the pan's here. So <laughs> that under the rubble. So that that will get, which the pan's in good nick. Like, yeah, it's under a bit of rubble, but you know, blasted, painted, and a little bit of rustle power on there. Yes. She's good to go. Yeah. This is just your rolling pan just for now. Yeah, that's what I'd call it because there's no, Roll, yeah, no floor. Yeah, yeah. Bit of a Flintstones at the minute. Yeah, but that's okay. So then on the front, front fenders and front bonnet, a standard yeah. beetle. Yeah, they haven't been modified. Nothing really. modified, so that's pretty standard there. So that is there, but that's probably the only bit that hasn't been modified because yeah. then if we go back from there, then we start to hit the, the roof. roof's been chopped. Four inches out of the roof. Four inches, which is a fair old drop. Yep. The doors... Just have the tops taken off. Only it? the tops taken off. So fundamentally the doors are the same except for the tops cut off, but the roof chopped. Yep. That looks like a nice chop, to be fair. That looks brilliant. And I put the top of the, uh, top of the door frames in the fill in that cap so you get an extra inch and a half lower on the roof sort of look. Ah, uh, so what's that, sorry? So where that bit there yeah. is the top of the door frame. You yeah. Have a look on the other side. That's joined in. Ah, uh, okay. So that gives you a little bit more. Width on there. Yeah. Yeah, okay, because otherwise it'll be a bit thinner. Yeah. And then we've got, so the rear then, the fender, the rear fenders are the same. Yeah. But then the roof has been. Moved forward about 20 inches. Forward. Yeah. Okay, so and that's why you get the yeah. the sculptured yeah. so part actually, coming down. It's been cut about there, and I've slaved the two pieces together. Okay. Okay. Pull forwards, yeah. and then you're currently going through the process of kind of getting the boot to sit up, matching it all in. So that's all the way around there. Pieces together, jigsawed together. Hammered and moulded by hand. Yep. And then the rear engine lid is part beetle. 1500, no, 68, 1500 on the white part. Yeah. And the bottom section's a 63 rear lid. And then that you're currently working through yep. a kind of patching that in. Yep. And then. All the lines right. Yeah. And then this will be Subaru. Yeah, Subaru. I originally ran out with the 1200 Beetle in it to Loreggio. <laughs> and then we're gonna change it up a bit. <laughs> Good idea. Popping the radiator in it. Yeah, so that will then be Subaru and we will move the firewall forward a little yep. bit. So let's look at the firewall. So I think with any of these ones, there's always a little bit of messing around to get the cooling right. So move the firewall forward and that's where you'll put the yeah, radiator. Yeah, it's gonna be sitting above the gearbox. Behind there. 
and fit that in. As you can see, she is a bit flintstone at the moment, but it's nice to have the floor pans missing, but at least actually roll the car around while you're doing some work on it. Otherwise, that's just naturally a pain. So then that'll be Subaru motor. So, uh, and I've never done this before. So it, it is a an adapter plate from the engine to the standard gearbox. Yep. So it bolts straight on. Which is pretty, um, pretty sensible. Then the clutch course, that works straight on the original gearbox and the accelerator cable must link up well enough because other people have done it before. Yep, hopefully that's the easiest part of it. That's the easiest part. And then outside, what you're gonna, so. Outside are we getting um, artwork on the outside? Street art, again, graffiti. Yeah, I think I that's suppose cool. you call it. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to keep the little creatures? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's actually, nice because it keeps yeah. the history of the car. I've taken photos of every panel before I've ah. put them apart. So I've got Ed Start. Ah. And the fella that did a little bit of work on it, I'm good friends with. That was a good so, idea yeah, that was to a take good, photos of it. Bit of a bargain. Yeah, look at that. So she'll have a fair few horsepower. Yeah. We've chatted about brakes, but I think. I don't know if we'll be able to convince you to put disc brakes on it, but... <laughs> yeah, I'll find a cheap kit that we're going on. Yeah, we might, we might start a GoFundMe page yeah. on here to uh, to get some decent brakes, because I think that would be a narrow, good idea. narrow beam with disc brakes on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then I'm assuming you're going for the old um, hot rod kind of look. Yeah, with bare the, bones inside. Yeah, bare bones and big... Um, they are 15s with yeah, probably six inch wide on the back and then the skinny tires on the front. Yeah. Just drop the front, leave the back the same height. No words. Yeah, because yeah, the first time I saw the pictures of this, I, I thought, oh, it's kind of getting that like uh, Heb Muller yeah. look with the yeah. rear on it. Oh, that's but what then, I was aiming for, but yeah. Yeah, but now it's kind of like 39 forward or whatever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, and, and that's more what I was starting yeah. to think about that. It had more that kind of, yeah, um, almost like the old, uh, the old bootleggers cars, yeah. like those kind of things where, you know, you expect somebody to be racing across the countryside here. Yeah, with a <laughs> little bit of moonshine in the back of their car. I could imagine this kind of doing that. Yeah. Wow. So how many hours you spent on doing this? No, I haven't been writing them down, oh, so I wouldn't know. Oh, come every, on. Every, every set day for a year and a half, probably. Oh with a couple of days off on work holidays. A lot of time. But you can see where the time goes. Well, I've moved that rear screen about three times. Oh, uh, have you? Yeah, that was a bit of a fiddle. Just to line it up? Yeah. See that there. Well, I actually had the roof set up and then I started doing the boot lid. And yeah. the boot lid was back here. So I had nowhere for that return to go to. Yeah, I So can. then I had to cut the roof off and move another I think originally the roof started about here. So I had to take another six inches further yeah. forward. Okay. I think I started off with 12 inches. Because I've only just done it by eyeing up old head mule pictures. Yeah. Seeing where the boot lid lines up on the guards and the roof starts. Yep. Things like that, so. And then this will obviously have, we talked about this will have hinges on it at yeah. some point. But um, there's a fair bit of weight there and how it balances out. So I guess that's a bit of something to work out a little bit later when you've kind of Might got pop the, some rams on it yeah, yeah, yeah well we said a stick of wood helps yeah. to start off stick with of wood bit of steel got, rod yeah well you've got the the beetle engine in and then you're swapping it to the yeah. subaru there'll be a fair bit of work there so but i think it'll look brilliant with the artwork on it yeah so time frame because i like i like to ask this question of people who have got projects um just to come back then in a in a little bit of time and say well how how do you think you're going what do you reckon? Um, hoping to have it by every month. Around May. Oh, counting months. <laughs> yeah. There's some commitment. Wow. And like I said, it's only Saturday, probably six or eight hours every Saturday. Yeah. Putting into it, plus any holidays I have, I'll nick down here for a couple of days. Yeah, and I'd count engine turning over and it yeah. running okay. And like I said, you've got the, 
the pan down here, yeah. as soon as that goes in, that makes a hell of a lot of difference to the car. Oh, sure. And then the outside bodywork, and if you, you've got the engine already, you've got yeah, the, the engine sitting on the floor at home. Yeah, Subaru engine already. So ready to go. So you've got all the parts. Yeah. Like you're ready to rock and roll. Yep. Oh, I was just been saving them up as I as I spot them. I just pop them in the shed. I've been pretty lucky, like uh, silver replacements and things like that. 120 bucks for both sides. That's all right. Yeah, off a second hand, off a 1500, a late 60s Beetle. Everybody told me they wouldn't fit, but we've got them on there, so. Bang them on, they let's see how fit. they go. <laughs> so here she is out in the sunlight. We're talking about having her lowered for when she's actually out on the road, but this old like gasser style raised up a little bit perhaps a big uh, pipe here blowing coal out the top might look quite cool as well but she is a gem i do like the paint on it yeah. big fan of that the rear does slope really well in with the rest of the body yeah there. now the only thing i wasn't real happy with was like the curve of the body on the doors you stand here and look down the side it looks a bit out sure. of whack, but yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the original body line, but it just seems a bit more increased because the roof's a bit flatter. Yeah, okay. But that's what better. comes out a little bit. Yeah. No, I don't think that's bad. I mean, once it's finished, it probably will right. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Well, she's going to shift yeah. with the super remoter in the back. She is gonna gallop away. All right. Well, a couple of months time, we'll be back and we'll take a look. Yep, that'd be great. Hopefully I'm down there, got it right. Brilliant, what a, what a lot of work and what a project. Look at this. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. The work that Rick's doing on that car is absolutely fantastic. Keeping the artwork and the little creatures kind of livery on the car is brilliant. I think uh, that will make the car really pop and stand out and keep a bit of a history of the car, which I really like. Uh, we're gonna catch up with Rick again soon and uh, see how he's gone with the build and hopefully see the car on the road. So please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you again soon. Bye.